Oh, the 80s. So many classic sci-fi action films came out of that decade, and we're going to talk about one right now. Let's get it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. And the film we're going to discuss today is RoboCop. Yes, RoboCop. This movie came out in July of 1987. It's rated R, hard R. It's an hour and 42 minutes long, although I did watch the unrated cut last night. It had a budget of $13 million, and upon release of that summer, it made $53 million. Now, this was an Orion Pictures production. The script had been around for a while. Ed Neumeyer, who, who wrote this script, wrote this. He worked on a film called, a little film called Blade Runner, which I absolutely love. And after that film, he wrote the script for it. He got the idea for this film, and he wrote a script for it. And it had been around a while. He went around to all the studios. Everybody turned him down. He continued to, to revise the script over and over again, and finally, Orion picked it up. Now, a lot of uh, big-name directors were sought after to direct this film, and nobody bid on it, but eventually they settled on Paul Verhoeven. Now, Paul Verhoeven, if you're a movie lover, know, we all know who he is now. Back then, he had done mostly, he's a Dutch director, and he had done some films over there, but this was his first major Hollywood picture. And when he first received the script, there's um, an interview with him that he said when he first got the script, he threw it in the trash. His wife picked it out of the trash, read it, and told him that he should give it a look, that he might reconsider. And he read it, and he fell in love with it, and he signed on to direct it. He made this his first Hollywood picture. Now, when he cast this film, we, he cast Peter Weller as Murphy slash RoboCop. We have Nancy Allen as Lois, or Lewis, sorry. Dan O'Hurley, yes, the, ma the damn mask maker from Halloween 3 plays the old man. He's the gentleman who's in charge of OCP, this corporation that's basically front and center in this whole film. And OCP stands for Omni Consumer Products. They have their hands in a lot of different pies. Ronnie Cox is in this film as Dick Jones. I've been talking a lot about Ronnie Cox lately because he was in a bunch of films I've reviewed lately. And he's great as the prick second-in-command of OCP. Kurtwood Smith, who was made my list of top R-rated action bad guys, as Clarence Bonnedecker is in this film. Miguel Farah plays Bob Morton. He also works for OCP. And Ray Wise plays Leon. He's one of Clarence's uh, scumbag helpers he's he's not a very good guy either and at the beginning of this film we see a news report and it tells us a little bit about detroit where this film takes place and we're in the future they don't say what year it is and we they had there's like a couple cheesy commercials very heightened very satirical some of this stuff but it's it's funny and it, it serves the purpose for where we're going in this film and then we get a shot of detroit and it's a nice symmetry of where ocp wants to take the city we see this old building which is the police station, and behind it, rising up behind are all these newer buildings. And OCP's plan is to, to demolish old Detroit and build this new Detroit, and they're going to call it Delta City. That's what they want to do. And we also learn that OCP has just got the contract to run the police department for the city of Detroit. And this movie definitely is about too much consumerism, too much corporation involved with government and corporations running our lives pretty much every aspect of our life. They definitely touch on that in this film. But they don't hit you over the head with it so much that you can't just watch this as an action sci-fi movie and have a hell of a good time. But that it is there. It's definitely there, and you can notice it. It's not like they're hiding it, but they're not bashing over the head with a baseball bat telling you about it. But it's definitely there. Anyway, this movie... Then, after that, we see Murphy. He just got assigned from a different police... His police department to this the downtown police department. And pretty much the guys that work there tell him, welcome to hell, because there's a lot of crime in that area. And he gets partnered up with Lois to go out. That's going to be his partner. So she takes, they go out on patrol. And there's some nice banter back and forth a little bit, getting to know each other. But then they get a call, and this is where we meet Clarence Bonnendecker and his goons. They're in the back of this van driving down this freeway with this burnt money, and he's yelling at one of his guys. He's pissed because the money's worthless now. And that's when the cops, they show up, and there's a shootout on the freeway. And then the action moves to this <clears throat> this plant of some kind and where these guys go to hold up. And Lois, Lewis and Murphy follow them. And unfortunately, this is where Murphy loses his life because the guys surround him. He's by himself. And it's a very violent, it's a sad scene. Um, they really mess him up. Um, and in the unrated cut, it's even more graphic. There's more blood. You see more of it, what they do to him. They shoot him like 20 times with a shotgun. They blow his hand off. I mean, they really mess him up, shoot him in the head. And then we find out, right before this, we find out there was a boardroom scene at OCP with the old man of all these people. And Dick Jones, 
at Security Concepts, one of their arms of their, their corporation, is trying to develop a robotic police officer. And the, um, Dick Jones brings out Ed 209, and he have one of the guys that are in this meeting hold a gun to him to have a demonstration. Well, unfortunately, it goes awry, and this guy gets killed by this machine, gets shot about 30 times, and he gets killed. And it also shows how human life is not valued by many people in this film. Like, this guy gets killed right in front of this whole room full of people, and some some people are screaming and panicked, but some of them are just kind of, like, blow it off. Like, well, like, even Bob Morton, they're leaving the meeting after this guy gets killed right in front of them, and the other guy that's with him goes, sorry about, I can't remember the guy's name, but sorry about, what do you think about that? And he goes, well, it's life in the big city. Like, don't even care. They just blow it off and forget about it. But when this when this fails... Bob jumps in and talks to the old man about his program at Security Concepts about the RoboCop program. And, that, and we find out that every cop that's a police officer signed this waiver that if they die in the line of duty, that they, OCP can take their body and experiment with this program they're trying to go ahead with. So Murphy gets taken to the hospital. They can't revive him. So next thing we know, they're trying. They're, Bob Morton and his team are term, turning him into RoboCop. And they explain how he's going to work. And now he's not going to have no memory of his former life, which will come into play later. And his first night out in a job, he's by himself. He stops like four or five crimes, and we see it. And they even talk about, you know, it jumps forward a couple days, and they say about how crime's going down because of RoboCop, there's a new sheriff in town. But then he starts having dreams of his former life, his wife and his kids, what happened to him when he got killed, who was there, like Clarence Bondecker and his goons. And he decides to take it upon himself to go and track these guys down because they're on the loose. And he does. He starts arresting, like, Leon, some of the other guys. And then finally he catches up with Clarence at this drug deal going down this factory that's basically a cocaine factory. And in a really cool action scene, and he takes Clarence Bondecker in for for arrest. But while he's arresting him, Clarence Bondecker leaves, leaves it out that he's working with Dick Jones at OCP. And since OCP runs the cops, he shouldn't be arresting them or something like that. And RoboCop's recording everything. So now Dick Jones knows RoboCop's a threat to him. And RoboCop does go to arrest him, but he's a directive in him. They can't arrest somebody that works for OCP. And RoboCop nearly dies, but Na- or Lois comes and gets him and takes him to this factory and helps him get back, get better. And this is where we see some of the makeup effects with RoboCop with his head off, and you can see Peter Weller's face, but all the electronics behind him, and it looks spectacular. Even to this day, it's spectacular. We'll get into who did the special effects in a couple minutes. We have a final shootout with RoboCop and Clarence Bondecker and his goons at this factory, and they end up killing all, they kill Clarence and his guys, and then RoboCop goes to arrest Dick Jones finally at the end of the film, and he shows evidence to the old man about how Dick Jones is involved in all this and even has Dick Jones saying about how he had Bob Morton killed by Clarence Bonnedecker and the old man fires him, RoboCop shoots Dick Jones he falls out the window and that's the end of the film and that is RoboCop, I did skip over a few things but we can't have a 20 minute long review so we gotta keep this moving, now this movie is a very, this is definitely a sci-fi action picture, yes there's some undertones of a message there but it's a very well done film I've always loved it. This is one of the movies I used to rent a ton back in the day when I was a kid. I'd go down to the video store and rent this all the time. I was fascinated with this movie. Um, the makeup effects were done by one Rob Bottin. Rob Bottin had done the thing years earlier, and obviously everybody praised those effects, so he, he was brought in for this. Well, him and Paul Verhoeven clashed repeatedly before produ- production started and during production on the design of the outfit, some of the makeup effects. And Rob Bottin said he never worked with Paul Verhoeven again because it was such an unpleasant experience. But after they saw the finished film, they were both blown away and they apologized to each other. And Rob Bottin worked with Paul Verhoeven on Total Recall, which I discussed about a couple weeks ago. The RoboCop suit cost between $500 and a million. It was joked on set that it was the most expensive thing on the set at all times. So that was crazy. And the suit was so hot that Peter Weller was, Peter Weller was losing three pounds a day. He was actually in the suit. So they had to install an air conditioner to keep them cool. That's pretty cool. Um, this movie, I would give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. I love RoboCop, the first one. I'm actually going to watch the sequel tonight. I'm not going to watch the third one in this review series because I don't like the third one and I don't even own it. But I do have the second one. I'm going to watch that tonight and I'm going to do a review on that. But yes, 9.5 out of 10 for RoboCop. What are your thoughts on this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. You all t- take care of each other. Stay safe. And I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.